All right, Jamie, what are we what are we starting here? What is the what are we gonna call this? Uh, this is day one of learning about Nick's journey of becoming a videographer. Sounds like a like a fun story. Mm-hmm. It's a long story. First question. <laughs> Bing. When what is your backstory? How did you get into your Nick is a wedding DJ, but he also shoots video. But how did you get into wedding videography from a DJ? Is that's not a normal jump? Maybe you can tell us the backstory. Yeah, it, it sounds kind of like a, a weird transition because usually people are, you know, DJ only or they do videography only. Um, to try to kind of fast forward through this because it is a pretty long journey over the last couple of years. Um, Take your time because we have all the time. There we go. So when I first set out, I had a uh, bunch of friends. Um, a couple of them were some close friends that we, you know, DJ together. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're DJing, we're having fun. You know, we're we're at the apartment, we're making mixes. Like we're we're learning about, um, you know, all this DJ technology, turntables, uh, you know, samplers. Um, you know, mixer, turntables, like all the fun stuff, just all the gear that you want to buy and just like press a bunch of buttons. So essentially how this whole, ent- my whole entire career started off. Um, I'll say 2009 is when it, it, that's when I started putting significant amount of money into my equipment. Um, I mean, I just wanted to watch YouTube videos, push buttons and just, just have fun. Um, making music or what I, what I called music. Um, this is actually when I did not go out in public, you know, this was just at a full-time job. I'd come home, have all my equipment, all my gear, my cables all neatly plugged in, like my laptop, all my software. And it would just be, it would be my, like my little. <laughs> for the younger, from the younger crowd, I don't know if YouTube had HD yet. So this is when Nick started his journey. Yeah. 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 Um, but every day I'd come home from work, um, and I'd have this just... What'd you do for work? I was a um, engineering supervisor. Um, so I basically had a team of guys, and they kept um, they kept everything running in this uh, textile plant. Mm-hmm. So, like, huge equipment and gearboxes and stuff like that. And I kind of kept them in check and helped them out with the uh, stuff that they needed. Um, and that was kind of the, the techie part is too, you know, if, if equipment broke down, uh, I had a lot of fun, like figuring out how to fix it. So it translated very well into, uh, my engineering career translated very well into my DJ career when I started, because to me, it was just the same thing. It was like, this piece of machinery is broken. This is how I fix it. Here's a piece of music production software. I want to create music and it, and essentially the process to figure out both things is, is exactly the same. You mm-hmm. know, you read a tutorial or you read instructions, you get experience, you kind of start learning about it. And then all of a sudden, you know, you learn how to put a beat together. Um, you learn how to, to mix. Um, so coming home from that engineering job, um, that gave me the opportunity to, you know, afford this a really cool pieces of technology. Um, and when I'd come home, I'd have it all set up, and <laughs> I knew nothing about DJing. I mean, at this point, this is this is Nick why, knows. Why did what got you into DJing, or what got you into what influence? Um, man, I guess we got to keep going backwards a little bit more. So, when I went to, um, I guess it was I was getting into middle school, and I really, really wanted to be in the band. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be a percussionist, and you know, really, yeah, I didn't know that. Um, however, everyone wanted to be a percussionist. <laughs> so everybody in the whole entire middle school, and this was a middle school that had, you know, sixth, seventh and eighth grade. And, uh, you know, the first, they only had 20 spots. So if you can believe this, there's a band, there's a, bro- a room and a middle school band and there's 20 snare drummers. And I was probably like number 24 or 25, and so, like, sorry, Nick, you know, that all the spots are, are filled up. And um, 
you know, is there is there an instrument that one of your family members played, or is there something like that? You know, just ask and, and see. So I asked uh, my parents. Um, I was like, hey, you know, I, I want to get into music, and my uncle had a trumpet. And um, Greg had a trumpet. Yeah, that's 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 the trumpet that I have. What? The older trumpet, the one that the brass one, not the silver one. And this goes parlays into DJing later on. Oh yeah. Okay. So I, because I wanted to be in music. I, I love music. Um, I really loved percussion, drums, and stuff like that. Um, and so the trumpet got in my hands, and all of a sudden I I, I became a trumpet player. I started learning and you know sixth seventh eighth grade um you know we moved and went to high school uh played trumpet all through high school um concert band marching band jazz band jazz band was my was my favorite and um so i went to college uh the only college i wanted to be in was uh, a college that i saw when i was um going to a football game so i went to a football game at freedom high school Mm mm-hmm this is in North Carolina. And, you know, our football team, our high school football team was playing, and we got to travel. Um, and for halftime, they had an exhibition band. And I was like, well, I, don't, I don't know what, what's an exhibition band. I was like, I don't know what that is. Well, apparently, it's just a band that only plays, um, they don't compete, they just play for performance only. Um, the name of this band was the Western Carolina University Marching Band. And, they came on the field. They just blew the whole stadium away. And I was like, I'm going to be on that field, you know, doing, I mean, that's, that's what I'm going to do. That's how you ended up picking Western? That's how I picked Western. It's the only college I've ever, ever applied to. Um, it was the only college that I ever considered. And um, so I applied to it. I wanted to be in the marching band. And all of a sudden I got it. I got accepted, and then with it being accepted, the first and then the next step was to, you know, go to band camp. So, um, and in band camps before you even, you know, go get into the dorm rooms and all that stuff. So, um, went to Western Carolina University, got in, got in the marching band program. The band gets to uh, move into the dorms earlier than anybody in the college, you know, about two weeks early. So we don't have to worry about fighting all the traffic on move-in day. So every single year of my college career, my move-in was just, there was nobody on campus. It was just the band and maybe the, you know, the sports programs, football mm-hmm. players, stuff like that. Um, and Western, for me, that kicked it up a notch. Uh, I wanted to do the school of music. I wanted to do uh, electronic music production at Western. That was a, a program they had. However, um, I'm not much for really practicing my craft as far as trumpet uh trumpet playing went so scales um, didn't love homework i didn't love homework i Mm -hmm. love learning music and then playing music um what i liked about jazz band is you got to improv improv a lot do a lot of improvisation and um that was nice because you know it was just in the moment you could kind of play what you wanted to you can wing it you could wing it. Um, no, you still had to know, no, know. Fund, fundamentals. <laughs> uh, but, but what I'm talking about is, you know, for for to get in the school of music, um, you know, all the scales that just had to be something that was under your belt, you know, 100. Uh, percent uh, Music theory I knew very well, but I just didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't practice my actual instrument. As far as music goes, you know, that knowledge is, um, I know that very well. Um, so didn't get in the school of music. Um, and one thing that colleges are very good at is they make you take a seminar course. And I think that's just called the backup course. <laughs> that's if your, your first thing doesn't work out, you're already taking a program, uh, within your semester to kind of, you know, segue over into maybe a different, different, you had to, different major. You had to test into a particular program and you failed and they sent you somewhere else. Right. I oh, got it. Yeah. It was basically like, you know. The marching band program is something completely different. You know, that you're cool. Go ahead and do that. Um, but we're, this is the music department. This is something different. And they were two completely different things. The kids from the school of music did play in the marching band. But the marching band was kind of like its own, uh, its whole own, you know, living thing. 
Um, because people that were not in the school of music could play in the marching band. So people that had nothing to do with, they weren't a music major, they were still in the marching band. So that's how I was actually able to stay with the marching band throughout college, but not be in the school of music hmm. um, as a music major. So I was with the band. Um, it was just so fun doing like performances, you know, just traveling, practicing, all that good stuff. Um, so when it came to my major, uh, I majored in engineering technology, um, which at the time was like manufacturing technology, man- manufacturing engineering technology. So not to put everybody to a, a sleep, but essentially like textile companies, um, which a uh, textile company is a company that makes like, you know, polyester. Boring stuff we take for granted. Boring stuff we take for granted. Um, you know, the fun names you want to, you want to call out is like, you know, Under Armour. Mm-hmm. That's all polyester. Yep. Um, and polyester is fake cotton. If that's an easier way for the audience to, uh, to take it in. So I was an engineer managing people. We ran equipment that made fake cotton and we sold it to Under Armour and other companies. Okay. That's called, uh, I didn't know people call so it. So that, that's that, that's my whole thing. So, but behind all of this, you know, I still had the music, um, I'd always just been, music had just been something that was always with me this whole entire time. It came to me very easy, and I always wanted to do it. Um, when I got to my journey job, I had my apartment, I had some money to actually buy, you know, DJ equipment, um, music production equipment, like Ableton, uh, controllers like Akai controllers and Newmark controllers and mixers. I just, you know, I just kind of plugged all this stuff together and um, uh, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I just, I just kind of came home and messed around for, with, with it for fun. Did you have anyone that was wor- oh, alongside you? Yeah. A friend of mine at the time was alongside me. And they, were, they also went to, to college with me. Mm-hmm. And every now and then we would, um, you know, we'd always kind of want to figure out how to play this music together. Like we never knew what was happening but we kept trying to learn how to dj how to play music um and eventually this started to uh evolve into a business and i, I really didn't see it coming because i think you're jumping ahead jumping ahead because mm-hmm. i know the story no one else does okay <laughs> you are messing with dj because mm-hmm. you and your friend are getting into it what makes you start djing outside of your bedroom where how does that when's your first where's your first event so my have you, where's your first time you dj'd whether it was free or yeah. paid so my friend from college moved down to to charleston mm-hmm. and this is kind of how everything got started he said you know i'm gonna become a dj i said okay well what are you gonna do it's like well you know uh djing is really popular down here um and weddings are very popular it's like weddings mm-hmm. I nip, I've that was been, still I, off the radar yeah i've been to like it, I couldn't put, put music and weddings together. I was like, it's like, oh yeah, there's DJs at weddings, but it's usually terrible. And it's, right. I don't want to do that. I want to, you know, I want to make electronic music. I want to go to concerts. I want to Most people's play idea clubs. of DJ is like a, a slick guy in a club or a smelly guy in a tuxedo. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's really nothing in between. And um, so what we eventually did um, as we kind of put this whole thing together is it, you know, it turned into a business and, you know, every weekend I was traveling to Charleston and just kind of, you know, weeing it, doing these, we were doing these gigs together. Where was, your, where uh, was one bars of your and clubs. first events? Uh, one of our first events. Um, who said, yes, you can DJ here and I don't know who you are. Okay. That was uh, O'Malley's on King Street. Um, so now, mm-hmm. that, this shows my age, O'Malley's is not O'Malley's anymore. It's the King Street Public House. It's already changed its name. O'Malley's was an Irish bar college kids got drunk at, right? Right. Which it's still a college bar kids get drunk at. But just a different name. Different name. Um, I think if you're like going out of business, if you just change your name, you'll... <laughs> I think Mexican restaurants you can, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you remember Mercury? Like it's... it's yeah. It's, <laughs> these are like old... Torch. Torch, the hookah place. Um, Seemed like a long time ago, but it's not really that long ago. I mean, this is like 2009, 2010, about seven or eight years ago. Which, yes, I guess that's 
that's showing how long I've been doing this. But um, anyway, so we were, we were, you know, allowed to do this bar gig. I don't know. We may, might have got 100, 200 bucks and free tabs together. with food. That's together, right? That's together. Ah. Um, and every weekend, we, what we used to do is uh, we'd take this money we made and um, we just, you know, buy drinks at Waffle House. And then I'd just kind of go back, go back to work being, you know, Nick the Engineer. And then I come back that weekend, and I uh, would DJ some more. And then I come back that weekend, and it was really just kind of just stepping in the fire and just figuring it out. The, the same thing when I get the engineering job. At this, let's say, how old was I when I graduated? Twenty three. Yeah, it's twenty three. So we were 20- on the five year plan. Yeah, we we're on the five. So it's it's twenty three. I graduated um, college in two thousand seven, and. Um, I got hired and they're like, okay, you know, you're, you're an engineering supervisor. I'm like, well, wow, this is a pretty big opportunity. Um, well, what they didn't tell me is that I would be in charge of about 40, you know, 30 to 60 year old men. And you look like a baby. And I would, <laughs> I look like I had just gotten out of high school. Um, and so being put in the fire like that and just kind of having to learn how to, you know, toughen your skin up and um, start figuring this stuff out. Uh, it was just the same thing again. You know, I'm going to keep coming back to this example, going out and just DJing. Like, I don't know how to talk in the microphone. I don't know how to make announcements. I don't know what people want to listen to. I know what I want to listen to. I know what I've worked on at home. Like how do you doing know my how to start mixing music? Because that's not like a formal training. Mixing music comes with... There's maybe more now, but not back when you started yeah mixing music comes with um let's see what i'm trying to say um uh, you want to learn how to mix music because you 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 hear it so as a dj you start to hear things and you're like how do i do that it's like man that was like a really smooth transition between songs like how do i do that it's like oh i heard this little echo and then there was like a little bit of silence And then it just, boom, like the drop happened right there. It's like, how do you, you start hearing this stuff. So you're trying to figure out how to You're just trying to figure out how how do you do it. Hooks and transitions. So you're, you're Googling stuff. You're listening to stuff on YouTube. You're, you know, you're reading forums. You're reading, uh, like forums is a, is a huge place. It's, it's man, it's a pain in the ass to read through forums. Um, because you're trying to find like. You're reading, D- you you're reading DJ forums? Yeah, DJ forums. So you're reading through all these these threads, and then people get off topic, and then they kind of come back into topic, and then all of a sudden there'll be this, like, golden nugget of information. And it's like, oh, you know, do do this plus this, and then watch this DJ's video. And then you click on it, and then you watch this DJ, and then he has, this, like, this prepared set, and he teaches you how to do all this stuff, and you're like, what? And then you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, like, what piece of equipment are you DJing on? And it's like... um I think it was this uh, DJ Serla. I might be butchering this, but he had a Newmark NS6. It just came out. And uh, he was doing these this cue point juggling, which is um, cue points for people that don't know. Uh, they're numbered pads. They're, it's, almost like, it's almost like a keyboard. And uh, each button is a cue. So this, the number, the first button would be like the beginning of the song. The second would be like a middle. Are they programmable? Part of the song. Yeah. And like the, th- you know, third and fourth uh, button would be where like a vocal would be. And then maybe the last button is, um, is where the last downbeat of the song is. And it marks a spot where you have a eight or 16 bar measure left. So when it comes across to that point, you're saying, okay, you know, I have eight to 16 measures, I mean, bars to um, lead in this next song. And so I'll get to that in a second. So he was doing all these buttons and moving all this stuff. I'm like, what the heck? Because it sounded, he was making all this stuff on the fly. Of course, he rehearsed it, but um, it's just like blowing my mind. And at that point, I didn't have the, you know, I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't know how to recreate it. All I knew was I need to buy that. DJ controller, you know, I don't know if I can afford it. I'm just going to buy it. I'm going to figure out how to buy it. And then I get it. And you're like, oh man, I don't want to touch this or break it. Uh, and then all of a sudden you just start trying to copy and then you learn. And then all of a sudden 
um, it just it starts getting more and more and more. So to answer your question on how to mix, um, mixing comes after you kind of start playing music. I guess it, maybe that's the, like you know what music to play. Like you're basically emulating kind of top 40 stuff on the radio. Mm. But then you're getting bored because you know that the audience wants you to be a DJ. So you're trying to, whether a DJ to you means that you want to learn how to scratch first. Uh, if a, being a DJ to you means you want to. Um, Are we good on time? Okay. Yeah, we got about 10 minutes left. Um, a DJ means to you that you want to do uh, cue point or like cue point juggling or whatever, um, like finger drumming. That's what people call it sometimes. Or you want to be just like a really clean, maybe, you know, house or deep house type DJ. And you want to do maybe uh, um, EQ mixing. Uh, these are all like different techniques to, uh, to DJ. Um, there's nothing wrong with either one. It's just kind of what direction you want to go. Uh, I was always into electronic music and so I really like very clean transitions um you know very gradual transitions stuff like that I didn't really like scratching or kind of dropping stuff really hard um I mean now I've learned a little bit of those techniques and I I, I use them but I kind of like to stick, stick to my clean way of DJing uh so you just learn all these techniques and then over time you know different situations will present themselves like you're at a club, uh, you know, you might want to have a little bit of a cleaner mix and you know more geared towards top 40 or, um, you know, stuff that the people that are there are picking up on. Because remember, you know, people there are tons of college kids, you know, people are drinking. Like, it's it's just a different environment. So as a DJ, it's that's kind of what you need to cater towards. Um, and when you're green, you, you kind of, I don't want to say pigeonhole yourself, but you have these... To me, I had like these blinders on. And I'm like, oh man, I'm just only going to play this stuff. I didn't know anything about old school classic. I didn't know anything about, you know, mashups or anything like that. I was just, I was just always playing just like, I don't know, like your typical Saturday night top 40 DJ. Um, and that's kind of where I started. Um, Question. Yeah. Okay, so you've now learned how to mix you started doing cool little tiny bars and clubs. Mm-hmm. How did you get your first wedding? So, not how or what was your first wedding? So my friend that we were working on this together, um, he got the first wedding, and I just essentially started kind of learning and then working off of what he did. Um, he was very good at uh, showing confidence, very upfront, regardless if maybe he didn't know what was happening. I was more, my learning style is more, I like to watch and then see people's reactions and then kind of see what he was doing and then kind of figure out my own way to put those two together. Because um, something you'll learn as becoming a DJ, you can kind of copy in the beginning and as you go, as you go further, but you're going to crash if all you do is is just copy and paste um, with your DJ style. So I kind of learned that the hard way because I kick off a, a set, like when we were playing together, like we, we would switch out DJing um, when we did these weddings. And, uh, you know, I'd have the crowd like going, 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 going. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> it's like I ran out of fuel. <laughs> you know, I didn't know, I didn't know what else to play. I was like, that that's all... That's, that's all, all you came that's all the with. music i i mean i have that's another thing i think is a uh somehow uh, misrepresents djs is that you know they have like forty thousand songs but if you have forty thousand songs you're almost hindered by your own you know you have uh you're you're paralyzed because the paradox of choice the paradox of source you have so much to choose from that you're like ah i didn't it's like a di- it's like a, a food dish. If you mm-hmm. have a, a billion ingredients, it's not going to be that great because you're it's true. It's not curated. Yeah. So you know now, 
I could just take a hundred songs to a wedding and it would be awesome. And I would just mix them up in different ways and depending so on what I want to fast forward a little bit to make sure um, we talk about video. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me segue. I'll, okay. se- I'll quickly segue. Cause, um, I got to reset the camera. We'll just, we'll just go ahead and reset it. And um, then we'll come back. I, I got, I got five minutes. So I'll talk for five more minutes and then we'll, we'll, we'll go to, uh, to part two. So you're, you know, I started doing weddings. I kind of took what I learned from the club. Uh, my friend and I, we, you know, we, we did weddings. We switched out. We started playing music. And you start to look like there's a lot of things that happen. You either run out of music and then the crowd's kind of there. And that kind of wakes you up to say, hey, I need to actually go back and do some homework. I need to learn how to mix this music together. Um, I need to learn how to find music. That's, an, that's a, another huge thing as a DJ. You can listen to music all day, but to find music is, is part of that art. You want to find music. It's just Pandora, right? No, 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 no. You want to find music to bring to um, your clients and weddings and stuff like that. So learning about, you know, DJ record pools and download services and like, uh, you know, white label music and stuff like that. All of this stuff is like, it's just like new, 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 new. So like new equipment, new ways to find music, new ways to DJ, new ways to mix. So you can have this big snowball things that you're doing and then all of a sudden it all starts to gel and you start to get more confident in what you do and then you start to have a system so i've developed this system and so i know how to now dj on my own by myself i've got my equipment i've got my music um so i'm doing weddings at this point and then the next brick wall that i hit it's not my equipment it's not my music selection it's not talking on the microphone. The next hurdle I hit is, well, I, c- I can't see what you do. What do you do? H- how do I, how do I know that you go to weddings, and you're you're a wedding DJ and you have this experience? And uh, so where we'll start part two. I'm gonna reset this camera here. Um, so part two is gonna be talking about. I figured out how to DJ. Now how do I show people that I'm a DJ? And that's where videography comes into play. Okay, so now you're uh, getting into video, but it's because you're trying to promote your DJ services. Yeah, I learned how to be a DJ. I'm doing weddings. Um, but people want to see me doing weddings. So how, how do you how do you show somebody you're doing weddings? You, I don't know, you get your little brother to hold a camera? Yeah. I don't, no. No. So I wanted to get a camera, and the fr- <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is funny or embarrassing, but uh, the Go first camera that my friend and I got, he didn't tell me he got it, and I didn't tell him what I got. We just kind of like showed each other. He got one of those Kodak point shoots. No, 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 no. Do you remember the... Oh, it's like the handheld. Uh, it's like a handheld, and it had like a uh, it had a USB fold-out. Yeah, it had a screen. Yeah. <laughs> like screen. It you had could, it, the ki- flip? The it's flip. Like, it's like the yeah, flip. Yeah. It was just like the flip, but it was, it was the Kodak version. And uh, then I got the Kodak version, but um, uh, my parents got the waterproof version. So mine was like a little bit, it was like all smooth. And I don't even know kids know what that is today. And it doesn't have 4G. It it they both look so ridiculous. Nobody knew what we were doing, because I would be, <laughs> I would just be at the wedding. I mean, smartphones just came <laughs> out probably, and they were just hitting the scene. Yeah, so you had these dedicated devices that that market thought would be like, this is how you take video. It's only you couldn't put a nicer no, camera. In no, it. and uh, I remember the one I had. It was nice. It was 720p. Oh yeah, oh, most no. were yeah. only. Like 480p, some of them. Yeah, this or was 720, and it was like mind blowing that you could do 720. And I think well, I don't even think it was 30 frames a second. I think it was like 24 frames a second. I mean, the GoPro or something is repl- is what that is now. Yeah, it was. Um, so, no lie, these two cameras are what started filming. I didn't know that was my start to filming. He'd film with one camera, I'd film with another camera, like while he was DJing, vice versa. Um, we would get this footage that we just thought was like incredible, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a little. And then you put. I it, have, I have the video. And then you put it on the World Wide Web. Oh my gosh, I, I, yeah, I have the video. It's, it's still on there. Um, 
and we put these little videos together and it was your typical, you know, have the package one, ultimate package, double speakers. I don't know. <laughs> premium sound. Premium we sound. We might have that on the website now. I don't know. No, no, I have the video. Pre- I can, no, I'm I can, saying I can premium. I play it. Premium more. stereo sound. Oh, man. And, uh. We had that Journey song, like, Any Way You Want It. It was on every commercial, probably. But we thought we were geniuses because it's like, yeah, like, it's any way you, you want it. <laughs> oh, as the like, back, as the, yeah, like they, the video background music. Like they, like they, we thought people would pay attention to that and that would make like all the difference in the world. And it's like, wow, these guys are professional. Like the, the music matches the message of the video. <laughs> it was like way over, way overkill for what we thought. Um, but at the time we, that we started doing actually, you know, bridal shows and stuff like that. And man, we were, we, the imagination and creativity was way more than the industry had, at least in Charleston when we, when we started. Mm-hmm. Um, we were not the stereotype. Uh, we, we were with that first kind of iteration. You were the young modern d- DJs coming up. Yeah, yeah. Not a uh, cummerbund tuxedo wearing 50 year old. No, we were, we were, we were, we were embarrassed to do that. So what we did is we actually went and got nice fitted suits. Um, you know, we had like our ties were like, it was just, it was different. It just a different take on what we, cause think about it. We're, we're young. We're going out to clubs, you know, um, be hanging out with, you know, uh, our friends and you didn't have shoulder pads in your suit coat. No, so pads. it made no sense because when we DJed, it's it's like, well, I don't want to turn into this completely different, you know. What what? I don't want to wear a gumber bun. I don't understand the. I don't think that's a thing anymore. I had to wear it in chorus, I hope which not. is weird. Anyways, oh, that's okay. You got your first video out. Yeah. Let's keep going. You're rocking it with DJ. You're doing weddings. Yes. Business is going. First iteration had a video. It was completely cheesy. The second iteration was a little bit more professional. Um. And then video started to be kind of uh, like our thing. You know, we had highlight videos of ourselves. We had just these high energy videos. Um, and my friend at the time, it was really good to kind of, you know, watch over his shoulder and find just kind of fig- – because he had a good vision for, for what to put together. And, um, you know, I would just kind of watch as this thing was getting created. And I'm like, man, like it's just – and it was always kind of overwhelming because it's like, there's so much power in this video and I mean that I that's what that's what sold just a ton of weddings that's just how we made a lot of money with um with the wedding business uh, went in during that period of time and ever since then for me I've just really been interested in figuring out just how to make it better how to make it better, how to make it better. Because like once you make one video, there's something that bothers you about it and you either want it to be like more detailed, you want it to have better lighting, you want it to be less shaky, you want to find out. It's a, it's the same thing as how I learned to DJ. You see videographers and they make all of these different films and you're like, man, like how do you color grade that? It's like how did you... Because I tried to do that, and I, I, man, my stuff was all was like oversaturated, and it just looked all muddy, and but it's like, but I don't know how you're doing that. And then all of a sudden, you try to figure it, you figure it out, and like you just get this like a little bit of this high, and you're like, oh man, like you're 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 really starting to figure something out, unlocking the secrets of the universe. Yeah, and then like you're waiting for that next time that you can film because you learn that one next thing. Um, it's, it's almost torture when you do wedding videography because. You know. Wait, before we get there, I want to, okay. I want to, you haven't gotten to wave, you haven't done your first wedding video yet. Okay. So let me, let me get there. Well, um, I, mean, I mean, torture in a good way. So. Okay. And oh, we don't leave a bad taste about it. <laughs> oh yeah. So what, go what ahead was, what was it? You, st- you still do DJ, but what was mm-hmm. the problem? What's, what's wrong with DJ? You know, the current opportunity you were dealing with, um, that started you on the new journey of doing wedding videography. Say it again. What made you say, I want to do more wedding videography? This is something I want to pursue. 
weddings to me uh i'm trying to see how to put this a lot of people won't think of it this way i guess this is why we're recording this (laughs) because my take on this is that a wedding is almost like a play uh it's like you're going to you're going to see a show not not from the guest but from a videographer's perspective or at least my perspective mm-hmm. um uh i i did a play i did a community theater play i did the music man um back in lake city during my, this, during my okay, engineering so you, career you performed in a play this isn't a video nope this is not a video so i performed in a play and uh was the music man and i was one of the traveling salesmen and then i was a salesman and then i was one of the village town people but there's two things i learned from that uh that i translated into weddings and what that was is you know during a play everyone's dressed up you have the, the scene is set um you know you have a location there, there's there's a story behind what's happening and um you know there's lighting there's production there's all there's all this stuff that makes it you know this show and then when you go to do a wedding you know guess what you have the stage is set you know you have linens you have flowers you have lighting it's a production you have have location um you you technically have actors you know you have the bride and groom you have their family friends and uh if you guys hear it in the background that's my my german shepherd she's uh Want to be part of the video? What is it that she's uh, vi- uh, interview bombing? <laughs> interview bombing. Um, so you have these similarities, and it's really cool because you know you can film anything else, but nothing's going to be quite like a wedding. Your wedding's always going to have that kind of presence of you know everybody's dressed up very nice. You know the the location's beautiful. Um, and you, you have a story to tell. So whenever you watch a play, you know you're you're, you're watching somebody that uh, a writer that has unfolded this story for you, and then you know the actors are partaking in different parts of it to tell to tell a story. You have a beginning, you have an end. A wedding, you have a beginning, you have an end. You know, uh, everyone's getting ready for their wedding day, and then um, at the same time, at the end of the night, you know you have the big. Uh, Climax. Climax of the wedding. Um, and then they get whisked away in their, their getaway car, and it's just, it's a beautiful story. And every time, it's that beautiful story, you know. It's take, took a long time to get here, regardless of what the bride and groom's um, <clears throat> background is. But they begin that story, they get ready, and then they kind of like live this little fairy tale throughout the day. And then they, they get whisked away, and it's just kind of that nice, like every time that happens, it's, it's just... There's certain parts of it I want to get better at. You know, I want to get better at um, telling the story better, but at the same time, on the technical side, I want the... So how'd you get your... How'd you get into the first wedding now that you... You know how a wedding looks. You've seen a bunch of them, hundreds, and then you want to get into video. What was your first wedding like? So what I did... Videography I filming. I was able to get into it... Um, because I had a lot of B-roll footage from DJing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm doing the wedding ceremony as a DJ, but I'm also fil- I'm also filming. Um, I'm also filming that part happening. You know, just to show other people that hey, this is the ceremony. But if you took a little section of that out, and then you put it with a little section of the cocktail hour, and then you put it with a little section of re- the reception, you're, you're you're essentially telling the same story. You might not be doing it. Um, at the highest quality because you're not, you're doing two things at once, but all of a sudden somebody sees it and they're like, Hey, um, you know, I don't really have the budget to do full videographer. And, but you know, Nick, I know you're, you've been doing this before. You do a lot of shots. Um, my friend's getting married and I want to do a, you know, a surprise for, her. so we want to get together and pay for her to have a, a little wedding highlight film. And, um, <laughs> And uh, and that's what I did, 
And um, that was kind of, right now that was about 16 weddings ago. So, Ah, so you're on your 16th film. Yeah. It, it, happens, it just happens so quick. I don't even know how to explain it. And now I'm getting ready to, you know, 10x the, the game with some new equipment because my vision of what I know I can do now is, is completely different. Like before it was limited to me, uh, you know, videography wise, it was limited to me actually selling myself. But now I don't, I'm not having to worry about selling myself because I have so much footage. You know, people can relate to the different venues that I've shot at um, and stuff like that. There's momentum. Yeah. I think, I think we can wrap it up there and continue on the next part. Okay. About more what you learned on how you got how you get better so we can yeah. talk about next time yeah i think the next uh the next episode we can talk about um you know now that i'm doing the weddings you know what, what's what's going on what's going on how am i how am i selling them how am i getting my equipment ready um, how do you get better how do you get better how do you teach second shooters or sure tell them no i think it's good yeah well that's a wrap <laughs> next time we'll talk about all the different elements uh nick's learned and you know how what it takes to keep getting better at his craft and teach others like me how to get better.